we find the essence of the gospel, and it's comprised of six essential truths of which we must remind ourselves daily. The first one is we can't write, we can't get right by being good. The second, what we can't do, God did. The third is we must rely on Jesus alone. The fourth, God's grace is free. The fifth, God's grace is not cheap. And the sixth, God's grace is resurrection power. That is the gospel. And we need to preach it to ourselves every day. So let's begin with the first one that we can't get right, can't get right by being good. So no one will ever qualify on one's own merits. No one will ever be morally fastidious enough for God to say, okay, you've met the minimum standard, you're in. The only acceptable standard of performance is perfection. James 2.10 says, for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of it all. Which leads us to the second truth, that what we can't do, Jesus did. Romans 3.21, back in the text again, says, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. I mean, you talk to people today, and the overwhelming sentiment is that, is that God simply forgives everyone because that's his job description. But that's terribly off base. Because something has to be done about our pitiful performance. And so God meticulously planned it long before the fall of Adam. You know, when, when God uh, authored the gospel... It wasn't a reaction like, uh-oh, what do we do now? God wasn't wringing his hands. Well, you know, we have to come up with a plan. You know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit standing around in, in holy convocation there in eternity. In fact, God had penned the drama long before even the angels knew that there was a problem. And so God did what we couldn't do. And we need to remind ourselves and to preach that gospel to ourselves every day. Which leads us to the third truth, that we must trust and rely on Jesus alone for our salvation. Romans 3.22 says, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. The key word is faith. Now, a lot of people, when you talk to them about having faith, it's equivalent to just believing. You can just believe in a hopeful, hopeful future. You can just believe in yourself even. But that's not saving faith. That's not real faith at all. I mean, James 2.19 tells us that, that even the demons believe in God, and yet they shudder. So what then is saving faith? It is a deliberate reliance on the righteousness and finished work of Christ alone to save us. You and I need to understand and have no doubts about what the gospel is. And the fourth essential truth is that God's grace is absolutely free. Romans 3, 23 and 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And when you and I put our trust in Jesus' work, then we are acquitted of every possible charge as if we had never violated any of God's laws. That's why God says in Romans 8.33, he asks this question, he says, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? And really, when he talks about God's elect, he's talking about people who are saved. People who have put their trust in Jesus. Who will bring any charge against believers? And despite your frequent failures, your salvation is a gift for which you have made no payment. Otherwise, it's not a gift at all. So God's grace is free, but also we need to realize that God's grace is not cheap. And that's the fifth essential truth. Look with me at Romans 3.25. And this is speaking about Jesus whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood. And it actually refers to the appeasement. That word propitiation refers to the appeasement of divine wrath. If you, if you have your Bible open, you may want to underline that and write down there that that means appeasement of wrath. 
That's what it is. God didn't simply excuse sin. Grace is not like some gratuitous statement from God where he said, eh, don't worry about it. It's only made possible by the satisfaction of God's wrath, just wrath against sin. And the Father is able to forgive us because he fully expressed his wrath against sin in the person of his son on the cross who gladly bore that wrath so that you and I might be rescued. But there remains one truth that we have yet to cover, and that's the sixth essential truth. And that is that God's grace is resurrection power. This is the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. And we must preach it to ourselves every day.